my channel it's Victoria here if it's your first time stopping by welcome thank you so much for clicking on the video um, I know I've been away <laughs> again you guys I'm so sorry but um okay I'm here to stay this time okay I was writing exams so I was kind of like on and off but this video is going to be a get ready with me but it's going to be a different kind of get ready with me because I'm really going to be sharing with you guys just a lot of things I've been learning um, in the past month really um, and I just thought like I've just had it in my heart to just share it with the world and it's going to be the Word of God and I feel like this is just such um, a series that has been a long time coming to be honest if you're someone that has been watching me for a while you already know that um, like a few years ago I think it was three or four years ago I uploaded a video called um, my one true love and it was just basically me sharing my personal journey with God and how I felt like my platform was supposed to be um, meant to bring people to God's kingdom and yeah I just really felt heavy in my heart that I was supposed to be telling people about God with my platform and I just honestly fear and just just disobedience to God I didn't follow through and yes many years have gone past now and here we are today and just the conviction just keeps coming back coming back and I've decided to just be obedient to God like I've surrendered everything I'm like God you know what like take control I surrender my life to you I'm tired of doing things my own way and yeah like obviously it has not worked <laughs> so I'm gonna follow your will for my life and do what you asked me to do without even arguing so here we are um yeah so like I said I'm going to be talking to you guys um, about God and this is going to be a constant and a regular thing on my channel and you know hopefully you don't have a problem with it but if you do have a problem with it please uh, find another channel to watch um, but yeah like I'm not going to be ashamed of talking about my faith and I'm going to share God's word and bring people to his kingdom because that's honestly my true purpose on this earth but yeah so anyways let's begin I'm going to be doing my hair and makeup so as you can see my hair is it's due for a relaxer and just a trim and many more things but I'm gonna work with it anyways so this video I need you guys to grab your notepad I need you to grab your Bible I have my Bible right here grab your phone if your phone has your Bible app but I need you to be prepared because I'm coming with scriptures I haven't mentioned the topic today's topic is going to be on fear I chose fear because it's something that um, has affected my life for a very long time and it's something that I have um, really f tried to fight and fought um, <laughs> even up until last night I, have, I fight the spirits of fear but um, yeah anyways let me start my makeup so before we start and before we dive in I want to just say, say a very very short prayer um, Holy Spirit, Abba Father, we come before you and we, want, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to be in your presence. I ask you, Lord God, to use me as a vessel, O Lord God, and speak through me, Lord. Let my opinions not be in any of this. Let it just be truly your word. And I, I ask you, O Lord God, that you give the, your people, O Lord God, spiritual understanding and wisdom to be able to have, to open up their spiritual eyes and ears to actually understand what I'm saying. And um, I ask you, O Lord God, to just take control. Thank you, Abba Father. We worship you and we bless your holy name in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys. So first of all, there's two types of fears that you can, two types of fear that you can have. You can have um, a fear of God, which is basically like having reverence for God and um, basically honoring Him. And then you can also have um, worldly fear, which is or demonic fear, which is um, fear that is basically placed upon you. By the devil and his agents to distract you and to delay you from your uh, purpose and preordained destiny so I feel like a lot of us in this generation and really a lot of Christians I find um, some of us don't even have that reverence like we fear man more than we fear God which is um, very disturbing because then that's how that demonic fear creeps upon us because the fear of man is, is essentially demonic fear um, and then having no fear of God is also just you're just asking for trouble in your life um, I'm going to open I want you guys to open the your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 29 oh that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commands always so that it might go well with them and their children forever so you can see like having reverential fear of God actually comes with a blessing when you have the fear of God 
it would break your heart to disobey God. You know what I mean? And the blessing is that, what does it say? Things shall go well with you and your children forever. So it blesses you and it blesses your seed. I feel like also in the church that the reason why a lot of people don't have that instead of having reverential fear for God, they have kind of like fear for God, like, oh my God, God is going to punish me because I did this and God is going like, they have that like worldly fear. Um, it's because they don't really, un you haven't like really taken the time to understand and really study God's character because I feel like once you really take the time to study God's character and you understand that, yes, he, he is a God that you should respect and fear in terms of he's all powerful he's also a god that is very compassionate and he's also a god that is very loving and another big thing that i want you guys to really take home is or to really understand is that fear is a spirit um i feel like a lot of the world right now which is essentially devil's plan and plot is to make people think oh yeah fear is like a normal way of life and it's okay to be afraid and it's normal blase blase but like i need you to understand that it is not normal to have fear god did not give us a spirit of fear second timothy 1 verse 7 write that down and i need you to have that memorize that verse it says that god did not give us a spirit of fear but a spirit of power a spirit of love and soundness of mind fear is not from god fear is from the devil the demonic fear is from the devil so when you and this is how you know you have a spirit of fear operating in your life when you know you're feeling very you get very nervous you get very anxious over things um panic attacks depression um feeling lonely feeling suicidal all those things are um they're basically branches that come first of all from the the main tr tree the main tree is fear and then all of its branches start to devour a person's life if the person does not nip the tree of fear by the root and catch it before it starts to grow that's one thing i want you guys to remember like do not think fear is just an ordinary feeling so another scripture i want you guys to open to is first peter 5 verse 8 um and this reads be alert and sober mind your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour so essentially this also goes with the scripture that says that the devil is um basically here to steal kill and destroy he's always looking for somebody that would allow him and give him access into their lives and essentially destroy that person and destroy their purpose there's a covering of God that is over you that the devil cannot actually kill the person. Because if the devil could kill everybody that was a Christian, he, he would just happily kill everybody. But because he cannot kill you, he doesn't have that power to just get rid of you from earth, right? Unless he actually gains access to your life and then, you know, in many different ways and gets you to commit suicide. Um, he doesn't have the power to just kill you from earth. He places... Um, different distractions in your life and different um, strongholds to essentially um, throw you off your correct path of life. Basically, he deploys the spirit of fear first into a person's life and then from that spirit of fear, that's when he's able to introduce other things into the person's life. From fear, it leads to the, uh, depression, it leads to oppression, then uh, loneliness, uh, feelings of um, hopelessness and unfortunately some people it leads to suicide where they kill themselves because they feel like they'll rather die than be living um, under bondage right on on earth and um it's just very very unfortunate because it's like if you really don't come to the understanding and if you really don't take it in that this fear thing that you experience is a spirit it's not just an emotion like the dictionary explains it's literally a spirit that needs to be rebuked from your life and in some people's cases they need to be delivered from the spirit of fear because it can be so destabilizing that they are unable to even like function at all like you know how you meet some people that have really really bad social anxiety that they can't even leave their house it allows you to believe the lie of rejection and 
believe the lie that you know nobody loves you nobody wants you to be around nobody cares if you're here nobody misses you and just it keeps replaying that narrative in your mind and in your soul and your heart starts to believe it so if you want to go to Job, i'm sure all of you guys know the story of Job. um how you know he was a very wealthy man and he had a heart after god and um then the devil was kind of like oh um allow us to uh test him and see if he'll still be faithful to you and god said you know yeah sure you can you can test him but just don't take his life so uh different sicknesses and and losses started to come on to job he lost everything that he had and he um he was sick and just different things were happening to him and his family left him his children died just all sorts of um terrible things were happening to him and this was all to test to see if he was going to denounce god as his savior and so job uh, chapter 3 verse 24 to 25 it says for sign has become my daily food my groans pour out like water what i feared has come upon me what i dreaded has happened to me 26 i have no peace no quietness i have no rest but only turmoil so as you can see the things that were happening to job essentially were things that he feared and he thinks he would i guess ponder upon that oh my gosh i hope this never happens to me this is why like you should be mindful of the things that you say and then be mindful of the thoughts that you harbor in your head because those things are what the devil is going to use to manifest in your life to basically destabilize you and make you give up so the things that he feared he, he was very afraid of losing his children very afraid of losing his family and his wealth and all that and that's why he said what i fear has come upon me and what i dreaded has happened to me so all the thoughts that he was he was nurturing and and thinking about in his head of oh my god you know i hope this never happens essentially every single one of them happened and then he says i have no peace no quietness i have no rest but only turmoil this is essentially what the spirit of fear does to you it gives you restless nights people have insomnia they cannot sleep for days because they are so afraid of okay if i sleep maybe i'm gonna have a nightmare or if i sleep I might have sleep paralysis um, so people have fears the spirit of fear upon them so bad that they are tormented by these spirits and they start to hear voices and they start to hallucinate and see things moving around which is also why um, I strongly believe that schizophrenia is a is basically demonic possession like I feel like it's it is a it is a sickness from the pit of hell because it is just tormenting spirits, tormenting, tormenting the person. They are seeing things that are not there. They are hearing voices that are not there. And ultimately, what happens? Some of them end up killing themselves or they kill somebody else that ends up taking them into jail or into a psychiatric ward for the rest of their lives. And then what else is left in that person's life? Nothing. And what has happened? The devil has basically thrown that person off what their, um, you know, God uh god ordained destiny was supposed to be this is also the reason why um if you notice in the bible like every single time god appears or the holy spirit appeared to um anybody really and wanted to minister to them the first thing that the spirit always says is fear not the first thing they always say is fear not um why because in order for me or not for me in order for god to be able to speak to you and in order for your ears to be able to hear him and for you to understand him that spirit of fear has to be deleted from your life like the spirit of fear cannot be there it has to be taken away from your life um i'm going to give you some scriptures um to really explain this so haggai chapter 2 verse 5 it says um this is what i covenanted with you when you came out of egypt and my spirit remains among you do not fear god made covenants with the with the, with the um, israelites when you know he got them out of egypt letting them know i will be with you i will never forsake you um when you came out of egypt and my spirit remains among you my holy spirit do not fear once again fear is not a spirit that god has given unto us isaiah 43 verse 1 it says but now this is what the lord says he who created you jacob jacob is also israel 
okay it's some like interchangeable um he who created you jacob he who formed you israel do not fear for i have redeemed you i have summoned you by name you are mine when i just read um the verses of you know from the bible of what god says to his people like it really just makes me happy because god never ever leaves us not forsakes us even even in times when we stray and go far away and you know we've let the devil just really take the driver's seat of our lives like god is still there and god never leaves us or forsakes us which is what i want you to really understand and i want you to hold very very close to your heart isaiah 35 verse 4 it reads um say to those with fearful hearts be strong do not fear for your god will come he will come with vengeance with divine retribution he will come to save you the spirit of fear is is basically clouding your judgment and you need to be able to hear god you need to be able to basically take in his words and take in his truth about your life about your identity and about who you are in christ the enemy knows that when we're walking in our calling we're dangerous to his mission so in any way shape or form that he can send any destabilizing force via the spirit of fear to throw you off course he will do it I'll tell you guys about the story of elijah i don't know if you've read about prophet elijah in the bible um he was a very very powerful man of god um in the bible and he did a lot of you know miracles and just he was a man of great faith in god we also see there's a story you know where he was also paralyzed by fear and it's so crazy because oh this is let me tell you the chapter it's first kings 18 and 19 so first kings chapter 18 and 19 you see how the prophet elijah in chapter 18 he performs such a mighty mighty miracle that left everybody there all the israelites there were in they were in awe they were giving glory and praise to god and basically what happened was um he called the prophets there were 450 prophets um of the mini god of baal and during that time was that was one of the idols that they had there and this was the time when ahab ahab was the king and he was married to jezebel okay so jezebel was kind of like a she was basically a witch and so she had the mini god of baal small g there and he, she had 450 i believe 450 prophets that would basically worship the god of baal baal and then you know that was how they would communicate with the god and all that so then uh elijah was like okay you know let's have a little showdown and show whose god is bigger than and who and so um elijah was like okay take this let's take this cow and this bull and basically cut it up sacrifices put it upon wood and and call on your god and whoever whoever can basically set the bull on fire without actually using like a matchstick or anything just by calling on on their god then we know that that's the true god right so you guys know like god likes to show up and show out okay so when the the people of the prophets of baal they went first and they called and called and called on their god to set this bull on fire they called and called day and night uh, Elijah was even mocking them at some point and just basically saying ah, what happened to your God is your God sleeping you know they what's happening you know and so um essentially the, their bull did not catch on fire because their bow God did not answer <laughs> basically so then Elijah when it was his turn then he you know he prayed and he said God you know show yourself strong um, so that these people will know that you are you are the true God and like I said you know God likes to show up and show out so <laughs> just with his one prayer uh, the whole bull caught on fire the pit underneath it caught fire like the fire was just like boom you know and everybody was just like wow you know um, they were quite amazed and um, they all fell to their knees the israelites they all fell to their knees and they worshiped god and they said you know yes of a true god is a living god essentially and then elijah um took the prophets those 450 prophets and he 
he said okay everybody should gather all the, like all the he commanded all the israelites to gather up all the prophets and said they should not let not even one of them escape and he they gathered all of them and took them to i think like a valley or something and then he basically killed every single one of them all 450 prophets he killed all of them and he's just one person by the way so then when this happened jezebel which was the queen when she heard about this she was furious like sis was she was pissed okay she was pissed and so she sent word that elijah should essentially watch his back that she she's gonna kill him that she's gonna kill him in 24 hours and so when elijah heard this news the spirit of fear just came upon him and you like it's crazy to think because just the last chapter this is chapter 19 now so in chapter 18 he did this marvelous amazing miracle that you wouldn't like you would be like ah is this not the same like, like why is he now afraid did you get so he was afraid he was so scared he decided to run and flee and flee the land right and then he was so scared for his life that Jezebel was going to kill him and then um, what happened again yeah so then he cried out to God and prayed and he okay yes so another thing is like the spirit of fear came upon him so strong that he he decided to get depressed and he even considered suicide because he said to god that god should take his life like instead of him dying in the hands of jezebel that god should just take his life so you know like it's just crazy that like the greatest of prophets pope whoever nobody's immune to this spirit of fear and if you do not know how to recognize and fight it it will overtake your life and just consume consume you in a way that you just never expected okay so now um like i said elijah then was praying to god he said that god should should take his life and he was so scared and then you know god gave him peace and gave him comfort and told him you know i will be there for you i will guide you i'll protect you and then he sent his angels to basically um provide for him and give him food and give him rest um god is so good um i want you guys to write this down romans 8 15 um and it reads the spirit who the spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again rather the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship and by him we cry abba father but when uh, god is talking about adoption adoption of sonship that means like once you basically receive salvation in christ like there's absolutely no reason for you to fear because now you've received god's spirit in you and god's spirit is not a spirit of fear okay so you have to have this understanding that you're a child of god and there's absolutely no reason for you to fear okay so now we have this understanding that fear is a spirit and it's a spirit that has to be renounced from our lives let's kind of go in deeper into um the sources of fear and so where it really stems from the root of fear um there's a book that i'm currently reading and i highly 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 suggest you guys get this book if um fear is something that you strong uh, struggle i highly suggest you guys get this book if fear is something that you struggle with it's called destroying fear by john ramirez why this book is so unique is because mr john ramirez that wrote this book he was actually an ex satanist worshiper so he was a warlock and um during the 25 years of his life as a warlock he would basically cast spells on people and and um so he basically has an insider perspective on how the spirit of fear operates and how the spirit of fear takes over people's lives because he casted those spells and the, he casted that spirit upon people and basically paralyzed their lives forever right um so yeah that's why i think um his perspective is very very different and he in the book he he not only explains the different um aspects to fear and the different ways fear can actually come into our lives but he also includes prayer points um for you to go into spiritual warfare because you have to go into spiritual warfare to win the battle over fear um or deliverance one of the two um depending on how intense you know the spirit of fear 
has a stronghold in your life you're you're going to have to go through one of the two at the end i'm going to do, actually do a giveaway so just stay tuned to the end so in this book he talks about um different ways in which fear actually comes into our life so i'm going to read some parts of the book and um it's really really interesting so he says the first phase is our childhood um this phase is all about your upbringing your family values your neighborhoods those you interact with and the influence of your family tree if anyone in your family has been tormented by and struggled with fear it could easily be passed down to you the devil wants to own those rights so he can first release trauma spirits like shock waves into the spirit realm that will eventually find their target this is the beginning of the mission so trauma spirits essentially a sense into because a lot of us to be honest and i will be very very transparent with you guys have gone through traumas in our childhood and i am definitely one of those people um i've never spoken about this before but i was molested uh when i was younger and so uh, for a long time in my life you know i carried this burden with me and i never told anybody for like the first 10 years of my life after you know the situation happened it happened around when i was like eight years old so I never spoke about it to anybody for like a good a good 10 years guys like when i came to high school here in canada then um i think i spoke about it one time when just all the memories that i had suppressed and all that were just coming back and rushing back to me and it was just so overwhelming i i broke down i remember i was in school i think the first person i ever told was my high school boyfriend at the time um because he was also he also went through the same experience and so you know he shared it with me and then we talked about it and stuff like that so um yeah so i definitely understand how he says you know I, like i feel like that really make makes a lot of sense because a lot of us have traumatic childhoods um that we are still recovering from um but yeah so that's one part and then he says the second so sorry guys the camera cut off and also i did my eye off camera just because i wasn't really sure what i wanted to do and i didn't want to waste too much time but yeah so the second phase is your teenage years from the ages of 13 to 19 the devil steps up his game think back to your own life i would be willing to bet you encountered people places and things as an adolescent and teenager that increased temptation in your life stole your confidence or wounded you or wounded you emotionally for some for some even to the point of contemplating suicide the teen years are extremely vulnerable and the devil knows it during these years he increases the attack to lead you deeper down the wrong path with a tormenting spirit of fear of peer pressure plaguing your mind and heart which is your will and emotions he unleashes upon you every demonic temptation sex drugs alcohol and more he may confuse you about your sexuality and try to steal your identity all these things come with the label of fear he will push that demonic weight through to the next phase okay so this one is one i can relate to as well um like i mentioned in the first phase that um mr john explains is the childhood phase in which i i told you guys i um i was molested as a child and so when i got into not even my teenager still as a child i remember when i was like eight nine years old um and i started to kind of like think about sex because the thing is once you get like molested or raped or um just any kind of sexual assault really um it it really and especially when it happens as, as like in your childhood child child years as a child um it really opens up that door for like just being more aware and wanting to kind of know more of you know what exactly just happened to me what is going on with me what is this person doing to me um you kind of um get exposed to sex at a very very early age which is exactly what happened to me and um i remember i would look up in a dictionary like sex like what's the meaning of sex and it was like like i didn't fully understand what i was reading but i was like okay like <laughs> i don't understand but you know sure and then i um i was molested by an uncle right so i didn't at my age i was like okay no i don't want to have like sex with a guy like that's that's like weird but i was like okay but i can maybe try with a girl 
right and so that's how the spirit of homosexuality started to also you know um come into my life and the doorway for it was that childhood trauma of molestation and um the spirit of homosexuality um it really just it came in and i just started to think you know like you know oh girls are attractive um i started being very very into girls really and um like i would make out with girls this is i was how old was i i think i was like 10 i would make out with girls and like in my class and i feel like even the girls that were participating in these actions with me they most likely also suffered from were also victims of molestation i strongly strongly believe that um because we would talk about sex right and they would tell me oh you know there was this uncle that put them on put them on their lap and he was like basically thrusting essentially and this is us at like freaking nine years old okay and so it's like that's a, another form of like um molestation right so um yeah um, the thoughts of homosexuality used to plague my mind like all the time and i'll be i'll be wondering like like i never really spoke about it to anyone too because i was very i was very ashamed um and i wasn't proud of it and i felt like i just felt like i was weird um so yeah like um so the the just as you can see like he explains it so well like so that spirit of trauma that um planted the seed of fear in my life on like fear of telling anybody about what happened to me feeling shame feeling like i was like like dirty and like my body was soiled and and then having other thoughts of homosexuality i didn't want to talk about it with anybody because i just thought like oh my god like you know what what are my parents going to say and like i just i was just very very afraid and then you know there were other childhood traumas as well that i witnessed and it was my childhood was not fun let's just put it like that um but let's move on so the third phase is your young adult years which is where i'm at right now so once you become a young adult the devil tries to fragment you control you manipulate you and contaminate you demonically through bad decisions and dreams of fear so nightmares that would that will bombard your nights finally he will try to enslave you and encage you in the fourth phase which is your adulthood so in this third phase in young in young adult years um i've also had like traumas and you know i've also had nightmares you know i've had nightmares of spiritual attacks before i never really paid attention to it because i never really explored the spiritual realm as seriously as i do now and so i never really understood the meaning of of the the dreams i was having i would always have sexual dreams right so that it's it's crazy because really once that seed is planted in your life if you do not catch it at its root it will grow into such a beast that like would torment you for such a long time so that seed of of of, of trauma from my childhood um it, like i said it opened the doors of like sexual immorality at a very young age in my life and so i would always think very lustful sexual thoughts of like girls and even guys as well and so like the bible also says that you don't even have to like commit like adultery or fornication with somebody all you have to do is like think those lustful thoughts in your head and you're already you know committing the sin right so you can imagine that also opened a portal for the spirit of fornication and the spirit of lust and the spirit of sexual immorality to start to bombard my mind and my and my um and my spirit so um yeah i would have dreams of where i'll, I'll be having sex with random people like i don't even know who this person is sometimes it comes as a familiar spirit or a masquerading spirit as somebody i know or like an ex to make me feel more comfortable and what happens is that once you have sex with these spirits in your dreams you are forging covenant with them a covenant is an agreement so it basically says that whatever it is that it came to come into agreement with you with you become one and you've said yes i agree once you have sex or you sometimes if it could just be communication or eating in your dream and stuff like that um it's honestly dreams is i take your dreams very very serious you guys like a dream is not just a dream um, a lot of dreams that you wake up from you have to wake up once you get up you have to start rebuking and renouncing that dream so that those things don't take shape in your physical life but that's a that's a that's like a whole nother video but um yeah so 
um, I would always have sexual dreams all the time and um, we also like I said I said to explore sex at a very early age and just just really corrupted like my innocence and um, obviously the thing is that like when the devil knows that you have like a big anointing and blessing upon your life he starts young to just begin to attack he starts to attack from when you're very 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 young um, and it is by the grace of God you guys the grace of God that God led me back to him because I was strained and I was going very very far away with like sexual sin especially and that opens so many doorways because it's like you have sex with people and you think it's just sex right but then it's like you're coming in agreement with the spirits that they have from their life from their generation and then you come with yourself and then carry all their spirits with you and all the curses and all that that they have in their life and then now the curses are on you you know what i mean like it's a lot it's very very deep but anyways let's move on so the fourth phase your adulthood now you're a prisoner in an invisible cage living your whole life in the control of the enemy's hands it is like a puppet with strings dancing to patterns and cycles of fear or you can or you can compare it to a hamster on a wheel that is running frantically but going nowhere you will want to break away but you find yourself unable to because of the images going back from your tormented childhood all the way to the present time it is a strat it is a straight jacket of fear fear that is that if i start a new life fear that if i start a new life i will not know how fear that if i change my address it will make no difference you may even decide to start over all over in a new town or a new workplace thinking that this will shake up the cycles and the patterns of fear that have plagued you from day one but when you get to that new town and that new workplace you realize that those demons of fear came with you okay and then he explains how he knows uh, this very well because like i said he was an ex-satanist right and that um he says i know this very well because in the witchcraft world we were taught in demon church yes there's really a thing like demon church he says how to examine someone's life spiritually and find the cracks and the voids of that person's soul we were trained to look into their spiritual DNA at the generational curses of their family bloodline to find a portal, a gateway through which to unleash the spirit of torment and fear upon that individual's life. Guys, and then um, he says, praise be to God, because the Bible says in John 10 verse 10, that the thief does not come, does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that in John 10 verse 10, he says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Okay, so it's like God still reassures us that once we put our trust in him and we, we make covenants with him and not with these demonic spirits, that he will protect us and he will keep us safe. Okay, so like I said, this book is really, really good. And a lot of the things I've learned um, very, very recently about the spirit of fear, um, I really just came to the understanding like maybe last month that fear was really a spirit and not just like an emotion that we feel so another thing I wanted to mention is that um, I find that a lot of us uh, newborn believers or Christians or old Christians whatever um, I'm using this palette by the way we tend to believe that you know once we are born again and once we give our life to Christ then we're no longer like all of the generational curses or all of the curses that we place on ourselves or the curses that we we cause on ourselves from engaging in new age things like um horoscopes i'm guilty of that for sure um things like um tarot card readings and um love practicing love attraction they bring and they open portals of of curses upon our life but we don't realize them because a lot of us are so ignorant of the spiritual realm so many believers um some people don't even believe that there's anything like witchcraft and they don't believe it because they feel like you know it's only when you think about it or engage with it that's when it comes to you but it's like no sweetheart <laughs> right from when you're born if there's any generational curse in your family it has already come upon you from right from the second you came out of your mother's womb it has fallen upon you and it's only by the grace of God 
um, and you know through knowledge um, of these things that you're really able to break free yeah, essentially what I'm trying to say is you can be saved um, you can be a child of God be a believer in Christ and still be living in bondage which I feel is kind of the states that a lot of um, believers are living in because you go to the church of God you see so many people that are suffering so many people that are broke they're poor they're living in bondage and curses that they do not know of um, and they have not realized so it's like they haven't thought to even break that a lot of it is definitely ignorance is when we don't have that intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit because I feel like when you have that having that intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit will show you parts of your heart parts of your spirit that need to be cleansed he will show you areas in your life that um in which the curses are operating and show you areas in which the the bondage is is working in your life essentially and he will help you um you know break them and so not, when you don't have that intimate relationship with, with the, the holy spirit it really just creates portals and and just openings in your life for the spirit of fear to creep in and remember what i said the spirit of fear is the number one weapon in the devil's arsenal so that's like the first thing he sends to a believer or to even non-believers as well the bible says that when god um sorry when jesus was uh when he ascended from the grave and when he was going back when he was going to heaven that he left us a comforter which is the holy spirit right we ignore the holy spirit a lot because it's like when you you know the trinity right god the father god the son and god the holy spirit we don't really pay attention to the holy spirit as much i find in church and um mr john he actually speaks about that in his book because the holy spirit is very very neglected in the um in the church of god uh which is quite unfortunate because the holy spirit is meant to be our helper here on earth so it's like if we are not engaging with our helper here on earth that can here on earth that can essentially intercede for us in times of prayer in times of fasting it's like what are we doing you know isaiah 16 verse 10 it says yet they rebelled and grieved his holy spirit so he turned and became their enemy and he himself fought against them you guys ways in which we grieve the holy spirit by telling lies um breaking the laws of god um engaging in fornication or gossip things like that it grieves the holy spirit and it says here in the bible they rebelled and grieved his holy spirit so he turned and became their enemy and he himself fought against them if you read the bible and you read the areas in which like the people of israel the israelites they started to worship other gods or they weren't paying attention to god as much and they they started to worship idols basically they were grieving the holy spirit by doing this they started to you know lie and just do all sorts of things and when god had his wrath upon them and the, like the kind of things he allowed to happen to them just so that they can understand that like i am the god the one god and the only god that you're supposed to be serving and there's no one above me he allowed for example um he allowed um nebuchadnezzar and his his kingdom of babylon basically to overtake the israelites because they were seven other gods so it's like god does not play especially with idolatry i think that's like that's the biggest one for him He's, he calls it an abom abomination in the bible another verse romans 8 verse 9 you however are not in the realm of the flesh but are in the realm of the spirit if indeed the spirit of god lives in you and if any if indeed the spirit of god lives in you full stop and if anyone does not have the spirit of christ they do not belong to christ so what this is trying to say is is reminding us again that we are not like this fleshly body that you're seeing is just like um what gives us the right to actually be on earth because we're all really spirits like our our actual person like who we really are we're spirits we're not um like this this body is not us essentially that's why when we die our spirit leaves our body and the body turns into dust okay and it says that um that god gave the world to man or something that man has basically territory over the world and spirits basically have no right unless they have 
they, unless they have made agreements or covenants with a human being that's the only way spirits can actually come into the realm of earth so when you watch in movies where the spirits they cannot access the the physical realm unless they enter somebody's body that's actually like straight facts that's how it works spiritually um so yeah um another verse i can give you ephesians 3 verse 14 Okay, I'll just give you guys all the verses, so I want you to just write them down, and then I'll read some of them. Ephesians 3 verse 14, and Ephesians 3 verse 16 to 17. Psalm 51 verse 11, Matthew 3 verse 11, Matthew 12 verse 32, and John 14 verse 26. Ephesians um, verse 3, and the main verse, chapter 3, sorry, and the main verse is chapter 16 in which he says i pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being okay so once again god did not give us a spirit of fear but a spirit of power okay um then we're gonna move on to psalm 51 it says do not cast me from your presence or take your holy spirit from me so this is when um uh, king david had sinned against god and god was you know angry at him and he was basically begging God for forgiveness and he said um, do not cast me out of your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me okay so like I said when Jesus was accept was ascending into heaven he said he will send down a friend a comforter for us which is the Holy Spirit okay so if the Holy Spirit leaves you you're really just on your own <laughs> you know like you're really just out here asking the devil to really come and come into your life to be honest because the holy spirit saves us from so much the holy spirit is a spirit that will tell you when you go into a place and you start feeling uncomfortable you know the whole gut feeling that you feel that's the holy spirit telling your spirit that i don't feel comfortable with this i don't feel comfortable here get out that is your holy spirit ministering to you so um yeah you do not want the holy spirit to leave you essentially and the uh, in the ways the holy spirit can leave you is when we grieve the holy spirit anyone who speaks a word against the son of man will be forgiven but anyone who speaks against the holy spirit will not be forgiven either in this age or in the age to come so when you blaspheme against the holy spirit there's a curse upon your head <laughs> so y'all yo, you need to be careful and anything that's blaspheming against god's holy spirit you need to disengage and repent and ask god to forgive you from it because as you can see it comes with a curse if you blaspheme against the holy spirit you will not be forgiven not in this age or in the age to come john 14 verse uh 26 that'll be the last one but the advocate the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything i have said to you so like i said the holy spirit was sent to us as a comforter as a helper on the spirit realm because god knows that we can do this on our own and he knows that like really without him like we will not survive and so that's why he left his holy spirit like god is all-knowing he knows what we need and he knows the kind of troubles that will come our way and he knows the devil and his tactics so it's like he left his holy spirit to direct our path he left his holy spirit to to show us what to do next to tell us what to do next which is why you have to nurture your spirit man and grow your holy and grow your relationship with the holy spirit because the holy spirit will guide you when you do not have the holy spirit in your heart the devil is basically using your life as a playing ground and he can whisper and tell you literally anything and because you don't have the holy spirit in you you become susceptible to um, so many spiritual attacks okay so you may be wondering now so how do I kind of get the Holy Spirit in my life or how can I build that relationship with the Holy Spirit and I will tell you in a sec let me just cut my crease i want to make is 
um, like I said, so you may be wondering, so how do I, you know, ask God for the Holy Spirit or maybe you had the Holy Spirit before and you strayed far away. In Luke 11 verse 13, it says, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Um, so essentially God is saying that all you have to do is ask me, ask me for my Holy Spirit. Make sure you you know, like make sure your, your house is a good temple for the Holy Spirit to live in, which is why it reminds us that our bodies are a temple of Christ. Our bodies are living sacrifices unto God. So make sure your house is a, is a temple that the Holy Spirit is happy to dwell in and then ask God ask him for the for for the holy spirit he's more than happy to give you the holy spirit because he has adopted you as his child once you accepted the lord and savior you became god's child so um yeah so we just have to ask him for the holy spirit another uh verse i could give you is acts 1 verse 8 um which talks about but you will receive power when the holy spirit comes on you and you will be my witness in jerusalem and in all judea and samaria and all the ends of the earth so once again god gives us a spirit of power okay so he says you receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses so that means that you go to the ends of the earth and you will tell everybody about god which is why i am here folks to tell you all about jesus christ because He's my Lord and my Savior, and I need you to also share in that good news, and I need you to live a life on earth that is a life of fulfillment, a life of joy. Like, as believers, we're not supposed to be struggling out here. We're supposed to be blessed. We're supposed to be fruitful. You want to always make sure you renounce the spirit of fear from your life. Whenever you feel like the fear is creeping in, or you're starting to get anxious, you're starting to get a panic attack, you're starting to get nervous, you need to rebuke that spirit of fear. Do not entertain it for any reason. You need to rebuke it immediately. Um, some verses to just kind of um, help you with this would be uh, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 to 4. It says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. What weapon are we talking about? The Word of God. The Word of God is a double-edged sword. In the spiritual realm, it destroys and demolishes uh, the spirit, especially the spirit of fear. And this book that I'm telling you guys about destroying fear, it has the prayers that you should say. Um, I recommend you say your prayers at night because... There's just something about the like there's just something about the night time that obviously you know that's when a lot of witchcraft and all these other things are happening so you want to wage the war during that time because that's when they're waging war against you so you also want to be firing 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 back at the same time if that makes sense so spiritual warfare is something you want to engage in but you need to make sure you're prepared before you go into spiritual warfare you guys um, it's not a joke because you also don't want to endanger you don't want to um, wear out your spirits especially if you're not spiritually um, matured or if you're not spiritually um, knowledgeable on how or what the right way is to go about spiritual warfare where do you get your identity from is your identity from the world or is your identity from Christ um, how do you see yourself how do you speak about yourself how do you think about yourself because the thing is that we don't really pay well we do pay attention but we need to be careful the things that we say about ourselves in our hearts and to and we say out in the world even to like other people and with some of us you know our self-esteem and uh, stuff like that it was broken from see our childhood if you were someone that you know uh, endured a lot of verbal abuse from your parents or people that you trusted um it can really really affect your sense of self and you can really start to build your identity in those lies um that demonic spirits were basically speaking upon your life through those loved ones because we need to understand that we war not against flesh and blood so it's, it's not that okay your mother was being very wicked to you or your father was being wicked to you there was a spirit that was literally controlling them 
um, so you need to have this kind of mindset um, and so yeah we need to understand how those words and um, they become verbal curses in our lives because how basically our, our parents or our loved ones or whoever whatever pronouncements say over our lives is usually what we tend to become unless you actually rebuke it as it comes you know I, when someone calls you stupid say i am not stupid i am intelligent i am the head and not the tail i am the first and not the last you know you rebuke it from your spirit and you do not allow that word to take shape in your life um so you need to also tame your own tongue because proverbs 18 verse 21 it says the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit so your tongue tame your tongue guard your heart these are so important because honestly so many of us lay curses upon ourselves every single day without even realizing it and you say silly things like oh like you make a mistake and say oh my god i'm so stupid and or you like what else can i give as an example or you just say to yourself oh, why can't i do anything or why do i always make mistakes there's spirit, spirits all around you and they are listening to what you're saying and as you're making those pronunciations they are agreeing with you and essentially it starts to take shape in your life and you notice okay you're always calling yourself stupid now you're actually really acting stupid because you basically cursed yourself with your own tongue so you need to remember this power of the power of life and death lies in your tongue and you need to be mindful of the things that you say about yourself the things that you say about other people as well because like i said those create verbal curses right curses that can basically manifest themselves in people's lives after you do the pray prayers of renunciations now that you've taken up you've lifted that ground right and now there's that void in your in your spirit so you have to fill that void with the spirit of truth with the spirit of life with the word of god and you need to start proclaiming the word of God. You need to say to yourself every single day. So let me just try and put on my wig now. Um, my makeup is already pretty much done. I just need to do my lips. I'll be with you guys to round up everything in a sec, okay? just to round up this discussion and fear a few things i really just want to remind you guys to do is just pay attention and remember that your mind is a place of territory okay so it's a place of territory that the devil can conquer okay and once the spirit of fear is upon a person's life the mind is one of those areas that once you know the spirit of fear successfully takes over he can basically control your actions, your behaviors, your thoughts, um, how you treat people, how you think people treat you, how you think people see you, um, just all sorts of things happen in our mind. Your ability to be creative, your ability to think outside of the box, your ability to be innovative. Um, he can paralyze you in so many areas once he has access to your mind so just keep that in mind and um some scriptures to help you with that um uh, ephesians 6 verse 10 to 20 okay um this is a scripture in which we put on the whole armor of god like the helmet of truth uh, sorry the helmet of salvation and and the breastplate of righteousness the uh, foot should be fitted in the gospel of peace our belt should be the belt of truth and we should have the shield of faith as well as the sword which is the word of god so 
I have this memorized because I, I literally have to pray it every night to myself during a time of fasting or prayer for me where I'm going into spiritual warfare. Um, you have to always, before you go into spiritual battle, you have to put on the whole arm of God and um, ask God to guide you and protect you because, like I said, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and demonic forces of high places. Okay, guys? So you need to be spiritually ready to know what you're about to go, go up against. Okay? Um, another scripture i can give you is romans 12 verse 2 um there's also john 14 verse 27 and john 16 verse 33 and um if i just read i'll read one of them do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what god's will is his good pleasing and perfect will so essentially this is saying that we should not conform to the things of this world um in terms of the way we think and the way we do things we should not conform to the things of this world and um that's very very important because we need to stand our ground as believers of god and believers of christ and do not let the things of this world or the things that you see around you ever change your belief in god or ever make you doubt god or make you think that god is no longer with you um especially right now with this in this season of fear there's so much fear going around right now in the world and this is how you also know why in end times because the devil and his kingdom are really trying to paralyze the world essentially globally believers and non-believers trying to paralyze everybody with that spirit of fear and so you need to be on high alert to pay attention so that way you do not become victim to this um, demonic spirit the negative thoughts pop up in your head um, or in your mind because they definitely will like we really can't avoid it because like i said we're in spiritual warfare every single day you're in spiritual warfare the, the, the evil ones are constantly battling and fighting for your destiny and for your life and you have to fight back within the first 30 seconds that thought comes up in your head you need to renounce that spirit rebuke that spirit in the name of jesus i rebuke your spirit of fear in the name of jesus for god did not give me a spirit of fear he gave me a spirit of love he gave me a spirit of power of soundness of mind uh greater is he that is in me that is in the in the world god has said that he has conquered the world and he has overcome he said that the battle is his you need to know these scriptures you guys like they're not even hard scriptures at all they're yeah, very easy to memorize and I really just started to get into my scriptures like last month okay so just by repeating them every day I've been able to memorize um, the Lord did not give me a spirit of fear but a spirit of love that's 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 um, Isaiah 54 verse 17 no weapon formed against me shall prosper so you need to know these scriptures because like I said those thoughts they will pop up in your head at some point in time in the new testament after jesus went into the wilderness and he prayed for 40 days and 40 nights and the devil came to test him or to tempt him sorry he um after he rebuked the devil it says that the devil went away for a season so he went away for a little while but obviously he was going to come back that's why they said for a season so um you need to renounce that spirit of fear and curse it at its root you need to uproot fear from out of you and fill the void with the word of God, which is why I said once you rebuke that spirit, you now proclaim and you receive the spirit of God, which is truth. Um, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. I don't know. I feel like I've given you this before, but write it down. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 and Zechariah 2 verse 5. Let's read Zechariah 2 verse 5. It says and I myself will be a wall of fire around it declares the Lord and I will be its glory within so God says he will be a wall of fire around us okay so we have nothing to be afraid of we have nothing to fear because God will be there for us and he'll be a fire all around us okay you guys so um, take time out of your day y'all like study the Word of God draw closer to God and you see your life and your behavior and your character, the way you see yourself, the way you carry yourself, it will just gradually start to change and change for the better as well. You see people will start to respond to you differently because you're different. Um, 
really the word of god is so powerful and i understand i understand why god admonishes us to meditate on the word day and night because not even only for the sake of battle for when the evil day comes but just for us to be renewed in our spirits and be able to walk in his ways and his will all the days of our lives so um the word of god truly and really is powerful and i hope you guys um were blessed by this i feel like I, i've been talking for like what feels like <laughs> six hours but um this video needed to be done um but yeah y'all so i hope this message blessed you i do not know who this is for or who this will help or where this message will even get to but i pray and i hope that it gives you a new perspective on on the um on the spirit of fear and on the powerful word of god you know and i hope it blesses you once again i just i'm really really happy i finally did this video i feel better about <laughs> it because it has been on my heart for a very very long time and i just was um procrastinating so yeah thank you all so much for watching this is me and my and my makeup done and my hair done let me know what you guys think of this whole glam with the word um the name just kind of popped up in my head i, I like the name a lot but let me know if was the makeup distracting was the hair distracting um, were you able to focus? Was is the whole concept? Do you enjoy the concept? Like, let me know your thoughts. I really want to um, hear what you guys have to say. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. In case you're wondering, my contacts are from Solitica, and you can use code V to get ten percent off their website. Um, this hair, I do not remember where I got it from, but it's from AliExpress, one of those um, AliExpress uh, companies. Um, what else? I think that's it so yeah guys <laughs> thank you all so much for watching i know this video was really really long but thank you if you stuck through all the way thank you oh yeah giveaway so um i want to give away the book that i have been reading the destroying fear book i want to give it away to some people to five people so leave your comments in the description in the comment section and i will pick five random people and just um send them the gift card thank you all so much for watching okay god bless you all I really really hope this message touched you and i really hope it inspired some kind of change in your life god bless you once again i love you guys so much thank you so much for watching thank you for supporting me it means hey thank you so much for watching thank you for supporting me it means the world and i really really and truly appreciate you all have a blessed 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 rest of this year oh also be very prayerful especially this month okay because this month is halloween month and um please dissociate yourself from anything halloween related if you are someone that practices it i used to think oh you know what's wrong with halloween like i i knew there was obviously something wrong with halloween because it's like why are we celebrating demons but like i never really really took it in but um yeah it's a very very demonic um practice because it's like it's a day of celebration for witches and wizards and even the author of the book that i'm reading he was saying how that um he sent out a video and he was saying how you know like in october that's when like the witchcraft people they really really intensify their powers in october and december so um you wanna if you have to go on a fast go on a fast um god bless you all i really hope god sees you through your journeys i love you all so much thank you for watching once again bye